Let's talk about chemical reactions. If we look down at the table here, we can see that we have reactants on the left side. Uh, hydrogen gas molecule is diatomic, and so we write the formula H2. The 2 is a subscript following the capital letter for the atomic symbol. tells us that we have two atoms attached to each other. Chlorine, similarly, is diatomic, and so the formula is Cl2 again. Now, a chemical reaction typically is going to involve old bonds breaking and new bonds forming. When we combine these two substances, we produce a gas called hydrogen chloride, which happens to have the formula HCl, and the molecule looks like that. Now the question is, if we come back and look at the reactants, will exactly two atoms of hydrogen in the one molecule combine with two atoms of chlorine in the one molecule to make one molecule of hydrogen chloride? And we can see that uh, that is not going to work out. We have an extra white ball which represents a hydrogen atom and an extra green ball representing a, a chlorine atom, what we'll have to do is make a second molecule. To write the balanced reaction equation for the reaction between the hydrogen and the chlorine, we see that we have two hydrogen atoms on the left side and two chlorine atoms on the left side, and therefore we will need to have two HCl molecules on the product side. Let's look at another reaction here where we're going to combine hydrogen gas with oxygen gas to make water. Now, looking down at the models, the hydrogen gas is diatomic, and I just have a couple of molecules here, and uh, then a couple of molecules of diatomic oxygen as well. In each case, the atoms are attached to each other, and so the subscript 2 follows the atomic symbol. Now, the question is, how many water molecules can we make? A prior question might be, what does a water molecule look like? Water has the formula H2O, and so water looks like that. Two hydrogen atoms attached to a central oxygen. Now, if we were to consider how many water molecules we can build with these starting materials, we would say we've got four hydrogen atoms, and every water molecule requires two, therefore, I can make at most two water molecules. On the other hand, I've got enough oxygen to make six water molecules. So what we really can do here is make two, and then we'll run out of hydrogen and the reaction will have to stop. So if I'm going to reveal what really can happen here with these starting materials, I will say those two molecules will combine with only one molecule of oxygen, and we will be able to make two molecules of water. Double check that you have the same number of white balls on each side of the arrow and the same number of red balls on each side of the arrow. When that works out, you have balanced the reaction equation. For the reaction that we just saw, we noticed that we needed two hydrogen molecules to combine with one oxygen molecule to make two water molecules. Let's look at another equation that can be balanced, the reaction between nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas to make ammonia. Hydrogen gas appears first. Hydrogen is diatomic, so we see two white balls attached representing two atoms in a hydrogen molecule. The nitrogen molecule is also diatomic, meaning two atoms in a molecule. It happens to have a triple bond, which we won't pay close attention to here, but it is true and the ammonia molecule has the formula NH3, so it's one nitrogen atom attached to three hydrogens. Now the question is, uh, can we use exactly these objects to build that object? My first observation is that there's only one blue ball here, but there are two there. I'm going to have to, if I'm going to use all of these, make at least two ammonia molecules. So let's put a second one down here. Now, do we have enough hydrogen to build that? I only have two hydrogen atoms on the left side, but apparently I need to have six when we're done. So I will need three hydrogen molecules, not just one. Now if you do your inventory, you have two blue balls on each side of the equation and six white balls representing hydrogen atoms on the reactant side and on the product side. 
balance the equation for the formation of ammonia by seeing that we required three hydrogen molecules with one nitrogen molecule to make a total of two ammonia molecules. That leaves you with two nitrogen atoms on each side of the arrow and six hydrogen atoms on each side of the arrow. The equation is balanced.